one thing we'll know for sure is if Matthias Nunes is indeed a target, we pretty much have a clear running of it looks like. This video is being brought to you with thanks to our friends at Surfshark. Surfshark is an app, a browser extension that allows you to not only browse the internet entirely anonymously, but also very securely. Surfshark will secure your data with industry leading measures using uncrackable encryption and the most secure VPN protocols. One subscription with Surfshark will work across all of your devices. I use it for unlocking things like American Netflix. We also use it if we want to watch our Canadian DAZN account and a couple of other bits and pieces. The good news is you can get 83% off. That's right, I did say 83% off and an additional three months free using the Anfield Agenda link in the description. They've also got a really credible and unique 30 day money back guarantee. If you don't like Surfshark, it doesn't meet your needs, which I'm going to be honest with you, it will and you won't. But if you do, if you want to change, Surfshark give you 30 days to change your mind. Why not give Surfshark a try? You'll be supporting us here at Anfield Agenda and you'll be treating yourself to the best VPN provider out there, bar none. Right, what can we expect today then? Look, let's get straight into it. a little bit of good news. Somebody who impressed many of us, myself certainly included, in pre-season was young Stefan Bjaitisic. I think that's how you pronounce his name, but you know me at this point, folks. Me and pronunciations aren't good bedfellows. Yes, he has signed a new deal, which will, of course, extend his time at the club. I think you'll agree with me. He's one for the future. Don't really expect to see too much of Stefan this season, but he's incredibly impressive. I mean, to think he's 17 years of age. And look, there's only been a few fleeting glimpses that we've seen of him in pre-season, but I think that he, uh, he hasn't put a foot wrong, really. Not really his fault that we were dismantled by Strasbourg the way that we were in that friendly. Didn't really go to plan that one, did it? But ultimately, I've been very impressed. He looks a composed, good ball-playing midfielder. And I've no doubt that he will go on to do good things at the club. So congratulations to him on his extension. And we look forward to seeing how his career develops. Let's start with the possibility of some incoming players now. We do know that Liverpool are, well, do we know? We think that Liverpool are weighing up the option of whether to act for a midfielder in this market. And I'll move on to speak about the midfield situation in just a second. But remember the other day we spoke about Villarreal's young attacking uh, winger, Jeremy Pino. Well, his name's been doing the rounds again today. AS, or a Spanish publication, say that the price tag for any interested club for Pino, which would include Liverpool, Arsenal, uh, and maybe Chelsea, if my memory's correct, it seems like even though his buyout clause is higher, the price Price that would take to get him out of VRI will be £42 million. Now, interestingly, I've also seen some, I think, far-fetched links to Ishmael Assar again um, after his wonder goal for Watford yesterday. And he was somebody who we looked at before Diogo Jota came in, but it was prohibitively expensive at the time. I think the structure of the deal just didn't work for Liverpool the way we would have had to have paid it. And I don't know if Liverpool are interested in bringing him in down the line, but I have seen him mentioned in a couple of newspapers today. So take from that what you will. I don't think that there's a need at this particular moment in time, really. Uh, in this window, I don't think a wide attacking player is the priority. I certainly think a midfielder is. And on the midfielder, there's only one real name that is doing the rounds today, and I'm genuinely surprised that one of the names that I mentioned, Ruben Neves, hasn't been looked at by many clubs in the Premier League. He's inside the last year of his Wolves contract, and it seems like he's not going to sign a new one there, and potentially available for a reasonable fee. But maybe he will end up staying at Wolves, I don't know. But I'm just surprised that I haven't seen him linked with more clubs who are looking to bring midfielders in. We've seen today that it looks like Chelsea are closing in and signing Frankie de Jong, which would be a good signing for them. They're willing to pay, it seems, the amount Manchester United were, which is somewhere around €85 million, Euro, I believe, which equates to, I think, £72, £73 million. Pound. So look, that will be a good signing for them. But what about us? We still need a midfielder. A couple of stories coming out today from Portugal. Um, one of them says, Mateus Nunes is top of Liverpool's wish list this summer and the Reds are preparing a bid for the midfielder. Uh, that comes from CM Journal. But then there's another article that said Liverpool could prepare to pay around 38 million plus 4 million in add-ons for Mateus Nunes. Now, again, he seems to be the one that's been linked the most. Is he good enough? Yes, by the looks of it. Um, you've, I've told you guys before, although I don't know too much about this guy, if Pep 
Guardiola's come out and said he's one of the top players in the world in his position, you know the guy's going to have something about him because Pep knows how to spot a footballer, as of course does Jurgen Klopp. Now, the clock is ticking. There's still quite a bit to go in the window. Like, I think, what, four weeks, roughly? Three weeks, let's say. Window closes on September the 2nd. They did move it by a day. So, look, I don't know if this is going to be a productive window with regards to midfield. But I think at this point, I hope at this point, we all agree that we need a midfielder. So if we can come to that agreement, and look, often at times you guys and me, we disagree on stuff, but that's absolutely fine. I think this guy fits the bill because we know that Klopp's looking for somebody who can play in a six and an eight, can be a bit of a box-to-box midfielder, can sit deep and possibly play in a double pivot. This guy seems to tick those boxes. Anybody I've spoken to that has watched them play more than I have, which wouldn't be too hard in all honesty, says that he's a very good player. And I know from chatting with uh, the guys in our Discord group, a lot of them are, some of them aren't even religious and they're already praying that we sign them. So look, I think we need to get a deal done to bring somebody in. Um, Ultimately, Jurgen Klopp does like to bring people in as early as possible in the window. But with Thiago out for up to six weeks, and I look back over the other players that have been injured in recent years in midfield, and last season was actually a bit of an anomaly for Jordan Henderson. I think he only missed two games in midfield for us, um, or two games last season, I should say. And seasons before that, his injury record was a bit worse. And we looked at Thiago as well. Thiago, when he was at Bayern Munich, his record was probably in the mid to high 50% of games that he was available for Bayern Munich. So, look... One thing we'll know for sure is if Matthias Nunes is indeed a target, we pretty much have a clear run on him, it looks like, because I've seen Manchester City, whose name was also mentioned for Matthias Nunes. I've seen them mentioned today with a, a move for one of the midfielders from Bayern, or excuse me, from Borussia Dortmund, whose name escapes me now. It wasn't Gio Reyna. Um, it was one of the midfields. I'm sure you're going to let me know in the comment section because you guys are pretty good at this type of stuff as well. Uh, so maybe we'll have a free run at the guy. And if we've got a free run at the guy, should make the deal a little bit easier to make. That's going to bug me now, who that Borussia Dortmund player was. And I can already see loads of people will be writing the name in the comment section. But there we are. That's where we are with that. Um, what we know about Mateus Nunes is that we won't be short of information on him. Liverpool have a great scouting network around Europe. And Pep Linders, of course, having worked in Portugal with Porto for as long as he did, will have no shortage of people that he can call upon to give him references or thoughts on Mateus Nunes. Now, as always... What's linked in the paper may not necessarily be what happens. We know Liverpool often come out with a name that none of us have thought about. Florian Neuhaus, that's a name that's been thrown up to me over the past few days by readers and watchers. Don't know why I'm saying readers. I mean readers in our Discord group, <laughs> but I don't write articles or anything, so I don't know where I'm going with that one. But um, yeah, I think he's going to go to Bayern Munich at the end of this season. At least that's what was told to me a while back. Not told to me as such like that's... I was speaking to a journalist and he said that's the most likely thing, but it's no secret. That's a pretty much an open secret in Germany. How can something be an open secret? I'm on a roll here the last 30 seconds. But look, I want to know whether any other names you think Liverpool should be looking at. And be realistic, because we'd all love a Barella. But it seems like 75 to £100 million pound would be the fee that was mentioned it would take to get Barella out of Inter Milan. And Jurgen Klopp to go from a position of not knowing whether we need to bring in the midfielder and then going and dropping 75 to 100 million pounds that i would seem that i would deem that very unlikely um also i'm delighted to hear that if manchester manchester city are looking to bring in somebody from dortmund it's not going to be jude bellingham and as long as it's not jude bellingham have at it do what you want manchester city there because we all know where bellingham's going to end up next summer i know that there was a bit of talk yesterday that manchester city might make a huge bid for him but honestly I think they'd be wasting their time because it's been very consistent from Dortmund, much like with the Jaden Sancho move to Manchester United. The window before, they said it wasn't going to happen. It didn't happen. They're saying the exact same about Bellingham, so that will be one for next summer. So let me know any names that you are, you guys would like to see us discuss or any links that you've seen that perhaps I've missed out on. Um, yeah, Mateus Nunes, 38 million plus 4 million in add-ons. That's what's been reported as a potential fee. I think that's decent value for money in this window. Let me know what you guys think. I will catch you same time, same place tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.